Yellow. Thank you for coming back. After I made a big crybaby out of myself in the last one. And then the last, the, la the one before that, and the one before that. <laughs> I hope you know that I'm just doing it for you. <laughs> no, it's true. Because I have that tendency of opening the door for other people. Uh, to kind of make it okay for them to do it. And just in many, 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 many ways. Um, yeah, it's I kind of make it okay for other people to do it. And um, a lot of the times I end up being the uh, scapegoat because of it. Because um, you can say I'm an agent of change. <laughs> um, anytime I have a conversation with anybody. And I used to a lot before. Not anymore. Anymore, I have boundaries now, and by that I mean that since I used to be a trainer, I I had to talk to a lot of people, you know, and um, uh, not just because they were my clients. My clients were okay because you know, at a certain point you get to know each other, and you know, uh, you have to, you get to share certain things, you know. Um, moments, you know, information, you know, uh, uh, cool situations, you know, so, but, um, in essence, I used to be available for a lot of people, and that cost me greatly, because you have to be uh, conscientious of how much energy you're putting out, and are you keeping any for yourself and I don't mean you know be selfish don't do anything for anybody that's not what I mean I, I remember I said boundaries <laughs> boundaries because um, um, your energy is everything and if you're just sacrificing it on anybody you know like having people around you that all they do is just leech off of your energy basically yeah or people who need you in terms of your energy or for you to be the um, recipient of all their garbage and whatnot, you know, is what I refer, what I was referring to. But in essence, you know, for opening the door for other people, you know, I get, I end up um, paying the price a lot, a lot of the times because uh, those who don't want the change uh, because you are, you become like a mirror, or whoever I, I am talking to, I tell them, you know, and they register it, and then they start to change themselves, you know, improving themselves, you know, because it's all about self-improvement. But then it gets to the point where the others around them don't like the changes, like you made them change, and then they go on campaigns of, you know, um, uh, tarnishing my reputation and whatnot, and um, it's bad. It's bad when you get crazy people, you know, uh, talking crap about you because the thing about it is that they they mingle amongst a lot of people. You know, they pass as normal people. In fact, they always put a great show on. You know, being oh, I'm a great guy. I'm a great person. I'm a I'm a good person and whatnot. That's why you find them a lot in churches and stuff like that. Because in church, I learned that there there are people. Imagine me being a kid and being sent to church by my parents, you know, and you're a catechism or you're a, at a gathering, you know, because there's gatherings of, you know, young people and, you know, praying groups and, you know, all these kinds of things. And you end up um, finding out that there are people who go to church to be really horrible, <laughs> to be gossipy, to be controlling, to be, you know, work all these power plans on people and really messed up and there are so many so much politics basically in church you know so it's um that's when i found out that uh people are just people you know and 
the ones who lack the character you can see them doing a lot of weak things you know especially all of them rooting or stemming from fear they just do bad stuff and you know because they figure you know well, everybody else is doing it if everybody jumps off of a cliff you know <laughs> but anyway so I put myself out here and let you guys know these things you know because again I've done it all my life and then now that I realize my purpose you know now that I know what what I'm doing <laughs> what I my emphasis should be or my intention is um, well that changes the game because as long as you're following your purpose you are rising in vibration and as long as you're rising in vibration there's really no nothing you should be worried about because you have good company again once in the penthouse you have great company you have you know the highest working with you you know and you being in the highest well it just it it just feels right if you feel strong you feel brave you feel courageous you feel like you can handle anything and you feel confident that you know whatever comes up you can handle it's not the same as when you're in the basement right you just feel like you can't do anything you know you can't handle everything and i hope nothing happens you know <laughs> that kind of thing but um um i started this video basically in continuation of my story right um and i'm calling it the kid from orion and i'm gonna tell you why who's this kid well i'm gonna have to wait 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 i'm gonna tell you the reason why is because again now that i know my purpose now that i've i basically it was revealed to me see last time i talked to you guys about tarot or no did i i think i did uh or maybe it was the video that i was working on before this one very very important tarot because it is a tool of the divine to communicate with us it is not evil but those people who don't want you hanging out with the angels and receiving messages and especially those who are screwing you over and the angels are like hey check out this guy <laughs> you know because you know again angels be telling on people <laughs> so people will let you know hey no don't that's of the devil don't touch that don't and you know give you all this uh horrible stories about this or that you know uh so because it is a tool of the divine you get to find out a lot of things and in my case you know i told you about you know that it was through dreams you know another dream that happened was that i was running and i had a lot of running dreams you know and i ended up um i, I have this story in another video but it is pertinent to this topic that i'm speaking about because it's all gonna make sense at the end so I'm running and I'm running and um, um, I'm running by this river, right? And up to the left, I can see a big castle, right? So I'm running on this really shaky ground, really shaky ground. And uh, uh, I see that the river is dried. There's nothing, there's no water in it. I'm like, cool, that's kind of nice, you know? And me being a trainer in those days you know and me being an mma fighter and uh, it's just i have been a martial artist for i mean more than 30 years i mean it's been a long time so i, I became it was i was kind of like a big nerve <laughs> because it was just wiry i was just so tight everywhere you know just muscles everywhere you know and tightness and you know uh tendonitis everywhere too <laughs> <laughs> but you know you just it's, that's what a fighter uh, s spends uh, his his or her time like you know aching you know or training or recovering you know <laughs> so <laughs> it's not always comfortable so 
because of that uh, of that um, philosophy of not taking the easy way, you know, I see that uh, I'm on shaky ground because, and I'm loving it because this is why I go to uh, run. I used to run at the beach because it was uh, th the effort, you know, the challenge. You know, it's like stay afloat because you know you run on uh, in sand. You know, it's a lot harder because every single muscle in your body is working, R working hard to keep you balanced, but not only that, stable, but also keep you going. You know, so a lot of factors come in. This is why it's very, very hard to do. So. Um, as I'm running, I'm in the shaky ground, you know, which has a lot to do with stability. And I see that riverbed that is completely dry. So I just decide, instead of taking the bridge, because all, all I need to do is just take the bridge, and there's the castle. That's my destination, okay, in my dream, right? So I'm like, I'm going to go down into the riverbed so I can get that, you know, that extra effort instead of just crossing the bridge. So I get into the riverbed, and it's right, of course, and my feet get stuck in there because it's muddy. So all of a sudden, I'm to my, up to my knee in mud, and now I can't get my legs up. And then just for fun, the river awakes, and all of a sudden I see this big you know, rampage or a big, you know, uh, it, it looked like the seven horses of the apocalypse, you know, coming towards me. And I see there's refrigerators and grocery carts rolling, stoves, you know, so this is big stuff rolling down towards me. So I learned this in Mexico because again like I mentioned before I learned how to fight there you know because it was constantly being made to fight so it was like you, you could never back away from a fight because hello Mexican it's macho country and in macho country you just don't do that you don't walk away from a fight nor do you wimp out or you you know like like the big orange blob you know how he whines a lot oh my god in Mexico we would we would fix that problem let me just put it that way um, yeah, nobody would get away with whining, you know. So, anywho, I see this big old storm of crap coming, crap coming my way. And I can't get out, can't get out. The bridge is right behind me, so I can't really move anywhere. I'm just stuck. And I figure, well, screw it. And I just brace for impact. Like I said, bring it. And I just... And then the dream ended. I like the fact that I faced the damn thing. I said, oh, bring it. I was like, Mex like Mexican, orally, bring it, you know. Because <laughs> it's like, well, if I'm going to die this way, I'm not going to die crying about, you know, about it. I'm going to at least, you know, by my own pistolas, by my own guns, I'm going to, uh, as they say, you know, uh, die with my boots on. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that but when I woke up I was like what the hell was that just a little side note this is what Paul McCartney t told himself when he woke up and he had yesterday in his head so, what was that what is that he was playing it around to people you know it's like it's, it's, do you know this song it's, He's literally giving away the, the goods, right? But he's like, he's just trying to find out, is, is this mine? Like, and after he asked everybody of, you know, he's like, well, I guess this is mine, you know? This is how the divine communicates with us, through dreams and symbols. And me being in an unshaky ground, running, you know, it said a lot about where I was in life. And then he said a lot about me making the dumb decision to just run face first into trouble, you know, instead of just taking the easy way. But it's like one is these things that you don't, you don't, you haven't earned. And not because you have to earn it, it's because in your mind you haven't accepted it. So you have to kind of pay some price. I mean, basically you set your own, the, the, the price, you set the, uh, the, the weight of the uh, penance. And then you run it on yourself, which is completely idiotic. I don't know why I do that. But, I mean, a lot of us do that, that we're doing these things. But at the same time, like I said, these are breadcrumbs. 
because as you do these things, you run into situations where you come into these insights. And, you know, God being our Father and everything, you know, it could be, you could also call it our bigger self. And if I know myself, I would leave breadcrumbs to my little self. You know, like if I was the future self, the bigger self, I would leave breadcrumbs for my lower self, for my smaller self, for my past self. You know what I mean? So it almost makes sense, you know, that um, I would come about all these, all these situations. Um, so anyway, that dream marked the beginning of a really challenging uh, episode in my life. I mean, it was years. Uh, where I, you know, a lot of stuff came at me. And um, I'm just barely getting out of it. And the, the reason why I'm making this video is to let you know that, again, these messages, they only mean something to you. So, like, I don't expect, you know, to, for me to tell me tell you my story and then go, well, it has to be like Pancho says or... You know, or, or you could say, "Oh, I, that that sounds like BS." You know, but again, the the signs, the symbols, they mean something to the one being shown the symbols. Like the rest, the other people's opinion does don't matter because they're not in your shoes. They're not the ones who have to go to sleep with this stuff. You know, in your heart and your mind. You know, so like I, I've been saying is that you follow your spirit. Because in all of the rules and regulations that we've been, you know, fed, and none of them, they say, follow your spirit. Because it would make all of the other things obsolete, unnecessary. All the rules and regulations and guidelines, you know, like, be good, you know, like, follow the law. <laughs> like, you know, don't, uh, for instance, uh, don't drive without your seatbelt on. Or, you know, uh, st stop at a... Uh, at a stop at a stoplight or a stop sign, you know, there are things like that that people take for granted because you know uh, people could just run a stop sign if they see there's nobody, you know. But then again, that light inside you saw that you didn't get away with anything. You just pretty much tally up another another offense, another karmatic offense, and it's gonna come and bite you in the ass. If you had a bigger self, you would create a system like that of giving and receiving, giving and receiving, so they're, they're, you don't need anything. You see what I mean? But we're misusing it because we don't know. Nobody told us, right? So, through all those troubles and tribulations that I ran into, or they ran into me for all those years, uh, I finally saw a sign again being alerted about this sign because that's what the angels do. They're constantly, it's like they're saying, remember, remember, remember. And so they're always leaving us all these clues or signs, for instance. They're like, okay, okay don't, don't look over there. Don't look, look over here. Look over here. <laughs> look at the birdie. <laughs> look at the butterfly. <laughs> look at the number 33. 333, 444. Four, four. You're, you're good. You're okay. We got you. They're constantly letting us know because, well, you know, it doesn't help anybody if you're in a lower vi vibration. It doesn't help your purpose. It doesn't help the big picture. You have to be in a big, and basically, what the angels are doing, and God itself, your father, your mother, nature, they're trying to get you to be with them, and only them, be in that, that high vibration, so, you know, they can fix you up for anything you need. And so they're constantly trying to get you, hey, hey, look over, look over here, you know, look at this number, <laughs> look at the sign. And it only means something to you because it's as if, like this example they gave in The Secret, that if you're walking by a bookcase and a book falls and it opens in that particular page, you're meant to read that page. I mean, there are no accidents. And it could be your <laughs> bigger self going, 
boom, <laughs> you see it in that book, just so you can start reading it. So, tarot readings are the same way. The cards that you get are the same way. They're, they're, this, they're, they're these beautiful, serendipitous moments where you know, oh my God, yes! Because there's like a connection, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, you guys, because you, if you've seen what I've seen, and I know that you, a lot of you in your own lives, you have seen so much, but you still believe in you, in fact, it reaffirmed your, made your faith that much stronger. You get this sense, this real, you, you end up getting this realization that it's like, it's almost, it's so moving, it's, it's so humbling because you go, oh my God, you guys are doing this for, for me? You guys are moving all this stuff just for me? And then you realize, oh, but you're doing this for everybody. Oh my God. It's just so humbling. So humbling this, you know, because you figure people in a higher vibration, get they have better things to do. <laughs> but if you could just see these beings of light, just kind of looking over in the shadows and just seeing us, you know, stumble on stuff and trip and and fail and feel bad for ourselves and just sink even more into a lower vibration. So there's uh, just constantly, you know, snapping, you know, showing you something. Look over here, you know, don't go down there. Don't go there. <laughs> That's why I always, you know, imagine, you know, when I used to tell my clients, you know, when you say something, because the major thing that people have to get over is the being so aware of oneself of the ego basically because the ego is full of our defects and all our shortcomings and all our failures and all that stuff and it just plays it and again because it brings you into a lower vibration so it has, it's it basically is a point of that little game but in the end you just um, it's, it's you know it's ego stuff it's ego stuff so is by understanding that you are more than that, that you actually uh, kind of snap out of that kind of that, that kind of uh, trance, you know. You feel limited. You feel like you can't do it. But then again, you like you have to kind of look up to this and remember. Wait a second. Yes, the signs and look at everything that's happened. So anyway, about this dream that I had, uh, actually that dream about the running and then the the debris and the river and all that stuff coming, you know, it was, again, in Herald, the beginning of a shitty time, <laughs> a very shitty time, full of many, many, many things, horrible things, family turning on me, family becoming literally enemies, not that I wanted to be an enemy, they, be, they started seeing me as an enemy, you know, uh, basically, there were big tower moments where you know things that were esta you know established ended up crumbling down, you know, and it was literally just to get me out of it. See, it's because the angels they knew that where I was, I wasn't going to fulfill my my purpose because I got people there, in fact, ridiculing me as I was trying to fulfill my purpose. People used to make fun of me because I used to talk to them like I'm talking to you guys. It's like, oh, you talk like you're giving a, a seminar or something. And it's like, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. I mean, and then they would say, you, you talk like everything's spirit, everything's spirit. It's like, because everything's spirit. You know, so like, like my purpose when was, was trying to come out and I had all these people, you know, trying to, keep me down you know so in essence the angels orchestrated this whole movement all of these horrible <laughs> situations that happened they're horrible from the standpoint of you know I could have done without them but without them I would have never been in the position that I'm in right now I would have never been in such a position where my faith is the strongest thing I have and my faith has gotten me through anything you know and I keep realizing that the more you trust in life, the more you trust in God and the angels and, and, and nature, 
your nature to to help you navigate life the mo i mean you get more into it you get you start to own it more and all of a sudden you know you, you just look back and go oh wow i i have i don't even live the same way i used to because you just practice different different things so all of this time i've been wondering man when is this going to be over because it's like honestly um a lot of things happen you know it's just when that happens you know you're kind of like this you know there's a card in tarot and you can see it's the nine of wands and this is guy this guy who's been through crap all beat up he's got a bandage on his head but he's firm he's like screw it bring it <laughs> you know i messed up he's just like rock he's like one more round <laughs> one more round <laughs> you know so um that's basically where I've been, you know. And then watching that tarot card reading, and I forgot who who it was. So, um, oh, I forget, but you're out there. You're a beautiful person. You're a beautiful vehicle for the divine because you delivered that card to me. And when I saw it in my screen, I hope I can I can get, because I took some uh, screenshots of it, and I'm going to put it on the, you know, as I'm telling you this story because... There it was, the death card. And I haven't told you about this other dream that I had, that when death came to me in a dream. Yeah, yeah. It was wonderful. It was like this scene from Coco. But I, haven't, I hadn't seen that just yet. I was, I was just arriving, and I could see there was a big plaza, and there was lights and everything, you know. The paper mache, you know, uh, uh, was hanging and everything. You know, because they make figures and everything, you know. In Mexico, this is what we do, you know. It was, makes makes it really festive. Like I said, it looked like a, co a scene from Coco, you know. Um, <laughs> and I see this big table and there's all these people sitting on it, you know. They're out celebrating, having looked like they were having dinner because there were, there were drinks and everything. And then I get tapped on my left shoulder. And I go like this, right? And I see this. It wasn't like bones, but it was very like, very skin and bones. But it was like gray, lifeless. You know, like the mummy. Like the mummy from the from the movie, The Mummy. You know, there's uh, this, uh, this part where it's just him. It's just that when... When you see a mummy that has been stored, <laughs> mummified for a long, long time, you know, that that texture in the skin, that's what it was. When I saw it, I was like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> big, tall one she is, or he is, I don't know. I call her a she because death, she, you know, that's where gender comes into play, you know. Because uh, you know, I could say the table what is she feminine right or i could say the pencil what is it what the pencil is an it's an it but essentially it could be a masculine um, uh, you know referred to a masculine you know or a boat there she go you know there she blows or whatever <laughs> but the anyway going back uh, before i get sidetracked again uh, again um so I was like, oh my God, and, was, and I swear to God, without moving her teeth, <laughs> I heard, I'm not here for you. It was in this woman, very feminine, soft, like a, like a, not like a whisper, but like, like the wind blowing. So I'm not here for you. I, I can't even do it. It's like, I'm not here for you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's comforting. And she just, you know, like in the movie, like, um, uh, it's a wonderful life, you know, what, or once upon a time, a time, once upon a time, Christmas, Mickey Christmas or something like that, when they point to the grave, that's what she did. She just pointed to the table where all these people were. And there was my grandpa. My big, 
tree, humongous man, bear of a beautiful man. He, you know, he was huge as a tree, you know, and uh, on the table, he he was a lot younger. And he was smiling, and he was talking. He was just a, I, he was always a jovial guy, but he had his little mustache, you know. But back in the, it was like a 1940s, 1950s mustache, you know, pencil, pencil mustache. He looked so good, so handsome, and I was just like, is is he? Is like, and. Back then, I thought it was, oh, is this Archangel Michael? Are you showing me Archangel Michael? Because uh, is back in those days, well, that's when I discovered Archangel Michael. But no, that wasn't Archangel Michael. Because then later on, after I kept going back on my dream, I kept remembering, and I remember the pencil mustache. Like, that was my grandpa. So it was good to, it was to see that, that he was, he was, that he was great. But also... It links him because he, his spirit has been helping me from the other side. Like, he's one of my ancestors. And so is my grandma, the one who gave me this one. Like, she literally gave me this a long, long time ago. I gave it away to my ex. And then once I found out who she was, I took it back. And just to know that it was in her hands when it was always meant to be mine. Because, see, when I got this, my mom was like, because my brother ended up losing his. He said, no, 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 give me that. You can't wear them because I, I knew you guys were going to lose them. My mom always was sometimes. But I was always meant to have this and she just put it away. And then later on she gave it to me and then I just had it for a few days and then I gave it to my ex. You know, So it was like I never had it. Until just a few weeks ago, I was like, because I just had it in store, you know, or in fact, around a, a figurine of uh, Archangel Michael. And I just took it back. It's like, maybe I'm supposed to be wearing it, you know? And then that's when I found out that my grandmother but it's also, it's also uh, helping me out. And I, I found it through tarot, through dreams, right? So... I had that dream, right? And there's death telling me about my grandfather. Basically, he was letting me know, this guy is helping you, <laughs> you know? But, you know, it's like everything symbols with these people. <laughs> so, just a couple of days ago, because uh, I've been, you know, it's... It's hard because the, the 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 memories keep coming back and the way you were raised keeps coming back and the beliefs and the ghosts and the stories that they told you about what life is about, you know, still plays on, on a person because, you know, they told you this when you were very little. So that stuff is, you know, in there in every single one of my cells, you know. So when it comes up, the job basically it's it's like let's survive this let's ride this storm because we can't succumb to this so we started again trying to uh what's uh, uh what's the word transcend that or um transmute uh those emotions that uh, that situation because like the courage like the card of strength a lot of people say, well, is, you know, look how brave she is. You know, she's shutting down the, because when you see the picture, you see a lady, you know, shutting down the mouth of a lion, you know, and it looks like the gentlest thing that you've ever seen. Because you see this beautiful lady in white with flowers in her hair. She's just closing very gently the mouth of the beast, the beast within us. That's what strength is. Not to, <clears throat> you stay down. It's like, baby, quiet down. We don't do that anymore. And again, give yourself some, you know, tender, some TLC. At the same time, correcting the particular bad habit 
instead of just coming at me. You such so stupid. You you always do the same thing. You always fall for the same thing. Instead of doing that, I said, baby, we don't do that anymore. So that's what strength is. And in the card of this of the strength, uh, and the tarot, you can see the symbology. You can see the symbol of that. So when I saw this death card. I'm going to have to do a second part around this one. Because the scene was... The scene, you always find that death comes in in a horse, you know. And she's got this big flag that it has the, the, the shape of... Uh, the Yeah, the, the image of... Um, oh, my God. What's it called? Uh, anyway, it's a fruit. Basically, it symbolizes, you know life and its abundance uh oh i cannot think of the uh, of of the the fruit is is a fr it's, it's fruit anyway i remember it later once i let it go um and um uh, pomegranate see so it has the flag that basically now death is heralding a new time Therefore, the fruit, the, the pomegranate, a new abundant time or a, 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 a switch, basically, after the storm, here's the sun or kind of like kind of thing, you know. Um, so in this, uh, so you have death and the, and the horse and the flag and there's all these all these people that are like death. You know, like they're all dead. You know, they're all laying on the floor, on, on on the ground, and everything. And there's only one person left standing, and it's the magician, because you can see the magician is uh, is dressed in white and red. Uh, not in other cards, but in this one that I saw, the magician is on his knees. And it's just like basically holding on to his faith or her faith. And she's sitting in the middle of a riverbed. A riverbed, but you can see that there's, the water has just left. Basically, the storm has just left. There's a few puddles of water here and there. And some, there's, you can see that there's, there was destruction. And part of the destruction what's left next to the magician it's his tools it's a pentagram basically a coin right a uh, what do you call it anyway it's a pentagram or a coin a sword a staff or a um, wand and a cup basically the four elements basically that all that was left after the, the destruction was just the magician on his knees still holding on to his faith or her faith and that was me because as you can see the riverbed was completely just it was that destruction that has just happened and everything's all over the place and the four elements are still next to me on my knees on that riverbed after the destruction holding on to my faith and the little horse is just stopping me on the shoulder this time the right shoulder and just to tell me it's over it's done it's over So when I saw this in a tarot card again, <laughs> because these dreams happen before before I discovered tarot. So when I discovered tarot and I saw these pictures, I was like, oh, my dream. So when I saw this that death card a couple of days ago, and I saw the river like. Because again, not all death cards are drawn the same way. They all symbolize the same thing, but this one meant that, like for me, like they had this picture for me to show me, a, you know, after the storm riverbed, 
where all, everything had just moved out and what was left was me. And just death just telling me it's over. It's over. You're done. <sighs> you, you have no idea how reinvigorating and reinforcing and calming that sign was, that symbol, that card. It was letting me know that all these years of, of the storm are over. Especially now that I've gone through so many changes, I've found myself Found, found out who I am truly. And I think I'm just going to have to tell you about the Orion kid in the next one. Because this needed to be said, first of all. I wanted to include it all, but... This is just too, too important to, to shorthand. Because you all need to know that the angels are there. That God is real. And your mother nature is literally, they're, they're all moving things around for you. They're always trying to get you out of your, out of your funk. And they're always trying to, you know, give you what you want. But most importantly, they're always trying to guide you to your purpose. And they do the best job at it by going in through you or within you and that's where the call starts so that's why I tell you you guys just listen to your spirit and don't judge what your spirit tells you just go with it I mean trust me a lot of the things I had to start doing they were very girly in the way I was raised and what I had been repressing the angel said no 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 that's you how can you stop being you and then still fulfill your purpose? No, you need to be you. You need to do what you do for you to be happy in a high vibration so you can mingle with us, you can be around us, you can get what you want so you can serve your purpose. I'm always going to tell you that you can do anything and everything and I'm always going to tell you why. Because I'm going to sit here as much as I can and fulfill my purpose of telling you and imploring to you and asking you to remember. See you next time.